What's up everyone? Today we're going to look at how we can change the language of the text in our designs using variable modes. We're going to do this in two ways, one in a static way and the other one in a prototype so the user can actually select which language they want to view using a drop down. As usual, don't forget you've got the Figma file in the description box below if you want to follow along. Also, variable modes are only available on the Figma professional plan. You can sign up to that using the link in my description as well. Let's jump in. If we look at our file right now, we've got this little design. We've got a picture of an apple. We've got a space for the name of the apple uh, description and then three different use cases for this kind of word. We've got this circle over here. This is an instance of a flag component that I've already pre-made for you. This flag component has five different variables in it. One that's empty and it's called select. And then we've got English, French, Portuguese and India and these are the languages that we're going to be using. What we want to create is a design where we have you know this information in English, French, Portuguese and Hindi and we can either change it in a really static way where we can just change the mode but later we're going to create a drop down so the user can actually change it as they're looking at the prototype. Let's get started by creating our variables. So over here, you've got this kind of database table, and this is what we're going to be plugging into our local variables. Everything is a string variable, and they're all gonna be in the same collection. So let's start doing that together. I'm gonna to go into local variables, and I'm gonna change the collection name. First of all, I'll call it info. Then I wanna create my first variable. Let's make it a string one, and I'll just call it language. Now I'm going to start by creating four modes straight away. So I'm just going to click on plus. So I have these four modes. Now the modes are going to be the different languages. Okay. So we'll call this one English, French, Portuguese, and Hindi. So that's step number one. We've got our four modes into place and each column is going to be a different language. Now we can start plugging in the different values. So the language row is just going to be a duplication. This might seem redundant, but you'll understand why in a minute. Now we're gonna go ahead and populate the whole table that we've got over here into our local variables. So the next one will be name, and then you can use the tab button to just move to the next one. We've got apple, then pom, then I'm actually gonna copy this one because it's got some accents to it, and the same with Hindi. And this is a really useful thing about Figma. Figma actually can show multiple different languages inside of it. Today, I've already tested Hindi, Greek, Thai, Arabic, and Hebrew, and they all work really well inside of the variables. So it's good to know that we have support for like multiple different languages that use different kinds of characters. So now we have everything plugged into our local components, basically just copying and pasting from the table. Just one quick note, I did use Google Translate for this. I don't actually speak French, Portuguese, or Hindi. So if I did make any mistakes, I really apologize and let me know in the comments below. Let's now connect these to our design and show you the first way of changing language, which is just to change the modes. Let's look at our name over here. I've got the local variables open so we can watch it at the same time. But if I select just the name text box over here and make sure that you're just selecting the text box, there's no other things going on. It's just that one text box. I'm gonna go to my apply variable button over here and I'm gonna apply the name variable to this text box. That would mean that straight away that changed to Apple because it's gonna take the first column. Yes, yeah, so this is Apple, it's gonna take that. Let's do the same for description. I'm selecting the text box, applying description. Well, lovely. And because this is inside of an auto layout, you see that it kind of adjusted itself accordingly. I'm going to look at use number one. Now you can see that these three, I've separated use one, use two and use three into just different text boxes, because if they're all in one text box, you can't apply multiple variables and we need to apply multiple variables. So use number one, again, going to go in here, use number one, and you can see that it kept the styling. So it kept that list style. It didn't reset that, which is great for us. Let's do number two as well two and number three. Great, I'm gonna close this, we don't need it. So that's step one, right? Now let's test this out. So if I select my frame over here, you can see that in the layers section of the design panel, I've got my variable mode button, right? And that means that I can now go in here under info, which is our collection name, I can change. But what if I change it to French? Yeah, everything changed because now if we go back into our local variables, instead of reading this column, it's reading this column. Yeah, and that is the beauty of modes. Let's try and change it to Hindi. Great. There is one font that I found on Figma, by the way, that can actually read Hindi and it's called Hind. Uh, and that's the font that I'm using for everything. So just letting you know, and it should be standard with Figma. Now you'll notice that the flag didn't change. So let's set that one up. You might have seen me do this in previous videos, but you can actually connect variables 
to a component, so they set the variant, okay? So if we look at our instance over here, this is an instance of the component flag, and we know that flag has different variants. Now over here, I've got the drop down to select the variant as I usually would, but you can see that there's an apply variable button over here. And with that, what I can do, if I select the language variable that we created, that will basically look for a variant with the same name and match them up, okay? So this variant is called English. And the reason it's selecting this one is because if we go back into our local variables, the language variable under the mode English is also English, yeah? I'll just show you if this was just English, yeah, if I had like a spelling mistake or something, what would happen here is that it would cross it out and it would say it can't map it out, it can't find the correct match. Yeah, so it's really protecting us. Now let's test it again. I'm gonna change it to Portuguese. Of course I misspelled Portuguese everywhere. So I'm just gonna fix that quickly and we're fine. So sorry Portugal and Portuguese people all around the world that I misspelled Portuguese. Sorry. So now we're here, let's keep going. We've got Portuguese, Hindi, Portuguese, English, French, yeah? It's all swapping perfectly. Bear in mind that on every single one of these items, so if I'm just clicking on this specific text box, because it's connected to a variable that has different modes, I can also set the modes just on this specific item. It's set to auto, which means it's gonna take whatever its parent is using. So if the parent is using French, it's going for French. But if I override that and say English, for example, just for this text box, and you can see this text box now has a tag next to it in the layers panel that says English, that would mean that even if the whole frame was set to French or to Hindi, for example, that specific text box will not change, yeah? So I'm gonna set this text box back to auto and you see that it automatically changes to whatever its parents doing. So that was the static way of doing it where we can manually change what language we're viewing and that's already great and super useful. But what if I want this to be dynamic and I want the user to be able to change between different languages in a prototype? Let's do that now. So first things first, I want us to create a drop down together. And we're just gonna do that here on the side. You've got the drop down menu ready to go. So I'm gonna move that into our design just over here. So that's what the user is going to click on to open the drop down. But we need to actually create the list, right? So let's do that. I'm gonna click on T to just create a text box, tap in and say label. Okay, and then I wanna add an auto layout around it. So shift A to create the auto layout. And I'm gonna select this color. So click on I on your keyboard to get the eyedropper tool and select this color. I wanna make this about 285. Yeah, that works. And I'm gonna move my alignment to the left. So this is going to be our kind of drop down option. Let's duplicate this two more times. So I'm holding down option and shift and dragging it down and one more. This one, I'm gonna click on I and get this color. This one, click on I and get this color. I'm gonna change the text to white. Great. So this is now going to be the component that we're going to use for the option in the drop down menu. This one is going to be the default state, just how it looks. Once we hover over it, we want it to swap to this one. And once we click on it, we want it to change to this one kind of really briefly. So let's set that up. We're gonna select all three of these and in the component drop down, select create component set. And for this one, we're gonna click on the first one and next to property one, instead of frame one, we're just gonna say default. Then the second one is going to be hover. So you just need to select everything that's in there and just type over it. And then the third one, let's say clicked. Now, if we select our big component and instead of property one, we can just change the name. So I can double click and call it state. So when I select my component now, you will have a variant property called state and inside of it, three different variants, default, hover, and clicked. And now let's create some component interactions. I'm gonna select my first row over here and using my noodle, just gonna connect it to the second one. And instead of on click, I'm gonna say while hovering, change to state hover. Easy peasy. Now between these two, I'm gonna pull a noodle as well. I'm gonna say while pressing. Okay, I don't want on click, I want while pressing, so while I'm actually pressing on it. So let's just see that in action first of all. I'm gonna grab this kind of default state, copy it and just paste it over here. I'll put it inside of a 
auto layout, so shift and A, and just remove all of these values. I'll copy the drop down option three more times, so command D, command D, command D. Now I'm gonna select the frame and shift and space to get our little preview prototype view. When I'm hovering over the different options, you can see that it's changing to the hover state. And when I click on one of them, see that while I'm pressing, if I hold down my mouse right now, you can see that it's changed to that white text and the darker background, and it does it quickly if I do it other way. So our drop down is set. Now we need to actually place it into our design. So I'm gonna call this drop down and I'll just move it closer to my design. So the way I wanna set it up is as an overlay. So I'm going to select my drop down selector over here and I can just drag a noodle, to be honest, between the two and I'm gonna say on click, instead of navigate to, I want to open an overlay. Now when you select open overlay, you get a lot of kind of settings over here and one of them is where the overlay is actually going to be shown and right now it's on center i want to set this manually so i'll go into this drop down over here and say manual then you can see you get this version of it on top of the design so i'm just going to drag it to be right underneath the drop down because that's what we're used to right to have the drop down open right underneath that selector so that is step one yeah if i select this apple frame and shift and space when i click on this i will get my drop down which is perfect because it's exactly what we wanted i'll close that for now now we need to connect it to our variables Let's do that. Because these are instances of a component, I can just set it up in the component. So I'm gonna select all of these text boxes at the same time I was holding down command to do that deep selection. And I'm in my component and over here, I'm gonna apply the language variable to all of them. Wonderful. But now the dropdown just says English, 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 English. We know how to change that, right? How am I gonna get this to say French instead of English? I'm gonna pretend you said the right thing, correct. So the way to do that is just going into the layers section in the design panel and changing the variable mode to French. I'm gonna change this one to Portuguese and change this one to Hindi. And it's really important that we do it this way rather than manually, and you'll understand why in a second. And then same goes for English over here. I don't want it to be on automatic, I want it to be on English. Now what we need to do is we need to set up a way that when the user clicks on one of these languages, all of this changes to a different mode, right? So I'm hoping that in the future we will have this sort of interaction with Figma where we can just say on click change mode to. But right now we don't have it, so we need a bit of a workaround. And this workaround is going to come in the format of current. What does that mean? We're going to create another collection. So we're going to create a collection and call it current. We're going to create the exact same variables we already have in info. So we're going to create current language, current name, current description, current news, one, two, and three. And for now, I'm just going to call them name, does use one, use two, use three. You can call these whatever you want for now, but the only one that's really important is the language one because it's going to select the variant. Remember that selects the actual variant. We need to call it dash space select space dash. Okay, because that's gonna match up with that empty flag variant. So once we've done that, we need to reassign this frame to the current collection. So I'll go into Apple and instead of name, I'm just gonna reassign it to current name. I'm gonna assign description to current description, use one to current use one, use two to current use two, use three to current use three. And over here, and instead of connecting this to language, I'm gonna detach it and connect it to current language. Great. So you see, because this one is called, how it's called with the dash space select, etc. It's gonna select this one because that's the exact same name. So now this doesn't look really great, right? And what we wanna achieve is that once the user, if I just play this shift and space, we wanna create a situation where once the user clicks on one of these languages, the dropdown will close, this will say Portuguese, and we will see the information underneath in the correct language. I also need to connect this one, by the way, where it says select, I'm gonna connect that to current language. And that works great because that just says select right now, which is what we're used to seeing in an empty dropdown, isn't it? So that's perfect. Now, we wanna initiate this whole chain once the user selects one of the dropdown options, right? And because we're using a component, we can do this once 
on this level. So I'm going to select this variant because this is the one we're actually clicking on, right? Once we hover over this one, it changes to this one. Once we press on this one, it changes to this one. So this is the one that we actually want all the interactions to be on. We're gonna add our first interaction and we're gonna say on click set variable current language to language, right? So right now it looks like when I select language, it's gonna change it to English, right? Because that's the kind of default mode. But again, because remember, this is a variant of a component and we're using instances of that component here. So I can show you that when I play this now, I'm gonna shift and space. I go into my dropdown and I select English. Yeah, so it changed it to English. It changed both this and this one because they're all using that current lang variable. If I select French, it changes both. Portuguese changes both. Hindi changes both. Okay, we're gonna change this in a second so it closes and all of that. But for now, we can see that it's working, right? So because this is in a different mode, so it knows that language equals French, it doesn't equal English. So it's gonna change current lang to whatever mode it's currently in. Let's keep doing that for all of our variables, right? So we don't just need to change current lang, we also adding another interaction here, set variable, current name to name another one set variable current description to description and then the final thing i wanted to do is close the overlay right so i'm going to select here and says close overlay so now once we click on it it's going to replace all of the current variables with the correct variables from the info collection in the right mode so if we're in english french portuguese or hindi and it's going to close the overlay so that drop down just shuts down Let's see if it worked. I'm gonna select my Apple frame, shift and space to open my prototype preview. Let's see. So English, drop down closed and everything changed. Let's try another language, Portuguese, boom. Hindi, boom. French, boom. It works. So that was a quick way of showing how we can use variable modes to change between different languages in our text. We did it one way super static and the other way we just showed how in a really, really quick amount of time we can allow our user to have a super dynamic prototype and they can really feel like they're actually changing the design. And you can see you kind of make this once and reuse it multiple times the way we just created it on that component and then it trickled down into our drop down. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what other videos you want to see. Maybe you're sick of variables and actually you want to move on to the next topic. Just let me know. I hope you're enjoying. Please like and subscribe. See you at the next one.